Our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew, the first chapter, beginning with verse 18. It is titled, The Birth of Jesus the Messiah. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when we, he had resolved to do this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When, Jesus, when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The congregation may be seated. most Christmas time and most Christmases, in most homes, when people are asked, tell us the Christmas story, read us the Christmas story, we don't often read the Gospel of Matthew. No, we take out our Bible and we open it up to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. And why do we do this? Because it's familiar. It's what we knew when, and what we know from when we were in Sunday school when we did the Christmas program, right? The manger scenes, shepherds, wise men, even our children last week told us the story, the good news of Jesus' birth through that. But today, we are hearing the reading from Matthew's Gospel. And in it, there's something very interesting for us to learn, and it helps us better understand the meaning and the message of this Christmas story. It's from an earthly man's perspective, like us. It's Joseph's perspective, Jesus' earthly father, his side of the story. And it teaches us some important things that Jesus meets us in unexpected ways and in unexpected times. That Jesus is the with us God. And that Jesus was sent for a reason, and that is to save us from our sins. You see, back in Mary and Joseph's time, they, they didn't date like we do. They didn't get engaged, kind of, not like we do. And then they didn't go off and get married and lived happily ever after, like all of us do, right? Oh, no, no, back then, there was this thing called being betrothed. And that meant that your parents picked who you were going to marry. How would you have liked that? Yeah? So, so you enter into this be being betrothed or betrothal. And it was this binding agreement. And you had witnesses that saw that you were going to commit, this was an agreement. You were going to marry this person. And the only way that you could break or end this binding agreement is by divorce. Hmm. So, obviously, when Joseph finds out that Mary is already four months pregnant, and we've got to whisper that when we say that, by the way, He's shocked, to say the least, because he knows what? 
He's not the father. So he has a choice to make, and he has three options. The first one is that he can just go on as planned. Just ignore that she's pregnant and not worry about who the father is. That's option one. Number two is that he can have her basically publicly disgraced and that she could eventually be stoned to death. And the third option is he can deal with it quietly and just get the divorce. The binding agreement will be over and it will just go on their way. And so Joseph, in his mind, right, we've all done this, has made up his decision. He's a good guy. What's he choose? Option three. We'll just, the binding agreement will be over. Now, how many times have you and I made up our decisions and we've made up our mind and then something happens and it changes our heart? And then you're like, oh, well, that's what happens to human being Joseph. The angel of the Lord meets him in a dream and says, oh, dude, she's okay. The child within her, that, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. But then the angel of the Lord does something very powerful and gets Joseph a vested interest into this story and says, you are going to name this little boy, this beautiful baby. You're going to name him Jesus. Right? And so now Joseph does have a part in the story. And then the angel even tells why Jesus is even there. Why this baby has been born at all or going to come. And that is the third, to save his people from their sins. Now, how many of us have ever had the angel of the Lord appear to us in a dream? I would be terrified. It sounds really great until it would probably happen and then I don't know what I would do. And so, obviously, is Joseph going to fight the angel of the Lord? No. He has a heart change, and he's like, okay, this is the plan. Right? But did you hear what happened in that story? Something totally unexpected. Jesus was not some man-made creation thing. No. No. There was nothing in a human. The human didn't just think up Jesus. No, this is all God's doing. The God that we worship, the God that we come and we sing and we praise and we pray to, took all of the initiative on this one. All of it. Planned it out from the very beginning, from the prophet Isaiah saying, this Messiah is going to come to you. And to you. And to me. This is all God's doing. Jesus comes unexpectedly. This God with us comes to us. Right? Isn't that what we're waiting for? And excited? And the second coming? Isn't that what we're hoping for? Preparing for? So friends, I'm going to ask you, and you're not going to look down so that I don't call on you. Okay? All right? The truth is, you know what I'm talking about. You have had this unexpected Jesus meet you. Maybe this unexpected Jesus has already met you this morning. I was talking to Don Richter, and we were talking about going Christmas caroling. And the message of Jesus came from listening to her. And she said, you know, it's such a beautiful day outside. I really don't want to go Christmas caroling. But I do. But I don't because it's such a beautiful day outside. And there's a lot of things I probably should be doing. But then she said, and here's where the moment of Jesus comes. But then I think about the people that are in those homes that we are going to sing to who cannot go outside on this beautiful winter day. That is the word of Jesus. Larry, has God not met you in an unexpected way? He's a miracle man here today. We've been praying for Larry. You're a gift. You're sitting by your sister and your brother-in-law. 
signs that Jesus meets us when we least expect it. How many times have we heard that? You know, I, I didn't even pray and God took care of all that I needed. I didn't know how much more I needed. We know what Joseph felt like. We know what that is. This unexpected Jesus meets us and cares for us in abundance. This is the good news. This is every Advent moment. This God with us. Keep, keep seeking Emmanuel moments. Because God is here. And will come again and again. Amen.